So every time we need an EU summit, we need the Greek parliament to come together to vote more, and this becomes a never-ending story, a never-ending story that leads eventually to Greek default. So if we're going to default in the end anyway, maybe it's better to do it right now, to stop. Well, the problem is to find a way out of the crisis in the short term, which also provides for solution in the long term. Now, the problem that we currently have is that the solution everybody's looking at is just to get Greece to be able to pay off its outstanding debt. Now, in doing that, what we do, I think, is that we miss this longer term problem of structural convergence. Because the policies we're using is to say, well, First, we get Greece to try and produce a fiscal surplus by cutting government expenditures. Well, the fiscal surplus is not coming and the economy is just shrinking. It's down 6% last year. The new proposals will cut out 7% of GDP. So it's clear that that solution is never going to pay off the debt and that solution is never going to get Greece to restructure. So you have to say, well, maybe this focus on paying back the debt is not the best part of the solution. Maybe we should be doing something else to say what we really want is to try and produce a change in the structure of the Greek economy that allows it to not only to expand, but also to produce a structure that would allow it to integrate with the rest of the, of the European Union. Now, the difficulty is that this second part of the question, nobody seems to be worrying about. Everybody's worried about, can Greece pay the debt in March? And then when we pay the debt in March, we say, okay, then we're going to have another debt maturity that will come in about six months, and we're going to have to do it again. So every time we need an EU summit, we need the Greek parliament to come together to vote more, and this becomes a never-ending story, a never-ending story that leads eventually to Greek default. So if we're going to default in the end anyway, Maybe it's better to do it right now, to stop. Now, the question then becomes, is this really a disaster for the EU if Greece should happen to default? And my argument is, well, I don't think so. Because the reason we were worried about not paying the debts is that a lot of European banks were holding the Greek bonds. The Greek bonds default, the banks go into liquidation, and you have a generalized financial crisis in Europe. Two years later, two and a half years later, most of the banks have sold their debts or they've written them down. Deutsche Bank in its last report said, we now calculate that our Greek bonds that we have left, down by about 70% from what we had, are worth 30 cents. So basically this is not going to kill Deutsche Bank if they don't get their 30 cents. The rest of the bonds are held by the European Central Bank or financed by the IMF or the Stability Fund. That doesn't make any difference if they get paid or not because that money wasn't going to come back. So really all we've got left are the bonds that are being held by the Greek banks and the Greek pension funds. Those make a difference because if they default, then we have a big difficulty, a bigger difficulty in Greece. So the problem is to find a partial default which allows the other holders to go away and say, fine, we realize I made a bad investment, but at the same time to find a way to support the Greek banks and the Greek pension funds. Now, the size of these holdings is, what, maybe 30, 35 billion, something like that. It's not, it's not a big number. It's a much smaller number than what we talk about every time. The current numbers are 130, 140, whatever it is. So this becomes a much more tractable problem. And then it more or less solves the problem of having to deal with the question every six months. And we can then look at the longer term problem and say, is it possible to restructure the Greek economy? One of the ways of doing this is to say, well, we talk about public sector involvement. Right? The private sector bondholders should take the 
take the cut, to allow some default. No, what we need is private sector involvement of international investors to come to Greece and to make investments to try and build up some sort of industrial sector in Greece. Now, how do you do that? Well, one way you can do that is instead of giving money to pay off the bonds, you can provide either regional funding, which the EU does anyway, or guarantees to investors who come in. Say, if you come in and you set up a manufacturing plant in Greece, we'll, we'll give you a guarantee. Now, this is something we do quite generally for developing countries. And we have to say, in this case, Greece is now a developing country. So if we want Greece to stay in, we have to treat it as a developing country, not as a country that can eventually, by cutting and cutting, produce enough surplus to pay off its bonds. This is never going to happen.